This is the patch and release video for version 4.2 of Poyomi Tune Shader. It's available right now to all $5 plus patrons. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link to the Patreon in the description. And if you're not, it'll be available in two weeks publicly for free. There's a lot of stuff in this patch, so I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as possible while still being informative. So first off, I improved the angular rendering. Before, you could only render based on the direction to the model. Now you have direction to the vertex as well, which allows you to not fade out the whole model at once and instead fade out parts of the model. So let's just enable that. And you'll see there's like a circle by default. That's because we are in the cutout shader and we're set to force opaque. So if we disable that and we lower our alpha cutoff, you'll see these circles where it kind of fades out. In game, there's going to be a lot more levels to those circles. So it's less obvious, but you can also switch to the transparent shader and have a proper transparency. So let's go here, default, transparent. And now you'll see that it actually fades out correctly. The only issue with doing this is that transparency has problems with overlaying textures or overlaying models. So make sure your Z right is off and you'll have issues like this. Um, there's not a lot you can really do about this. So I guess just use the thing appropriately. If you have Z right on, you'll have issues like these things, these blocky chunks in the background. And if you have it off, you'll be able to see yourself through yourself. So it's not really something for you to use on one avatar that has a lot of materials. It's more of something that you can use on like objects or say you had like a something on your wrist that you only wanted to show up when you looked at it, that kind of thing, you can do stuff like that. Or for example, on the back of my head, I have information that only shows up when you look at it. And that's how that works. Next up we have clear coat, which is, it works the same as metallic, but it sort of, it adds a, a clear coating of reflective or reflectivity on top of your model. So we're just going to enable the clear coat and you'll see that the model has become quite shiny. It's reflecting right now a cube map. So we'll disable that. And it's now reflecting the environment as you can see. And it, the settings work pretty much exactly the same as metallic. The only difference is in the way that they're blended. So as you adjust clear coat up, you'll see it starts to fade in at the edges more. And then as it goes up, the whole thing becomes reflective until it looks like it's just a reflection, like a mirror. So this is pretty nice and you can use it with the, here, one second, let me just make my hair properly opaque again. Um, you can use this with, with metallic and as you can see it doesn't actually by default it doesn't use the normals so it kind of looks like i have this thread underneath like a clear reflective plastic and you can adjust that so if you go over to your clear coat settings you can switch from vertex normals which are just the normals of your model to pixel normals which are the normals of your surface so now it looks like there's kind of like a reflective coating wrapping over the it's like really thin and wrapping over the surface it's up to you i'm not going to cover all the settings because they're the same as metallic so you should probably know how to use them already and if you don't you can click the little tutorial button right here so i'm going to leave that on vertex and i'm going to disable it next up a problem i see a lot of people having is that they have a specular or they, they turn on their specular and their whole mesh gets brighter even if they only want parts of it to be brighter and they'll adjust their smoothness down. But even if the smoothness is zero, they're going to still have specular lighting because that's how it works. And if they increase it, you kind of, it's never going to go away. So you could use the specular map and make the RGBA values sort of a white to black value to control how intense it was. And in that case, that does, that does work. But the specular mask is just sort of a simple way to quickly do that for people who don't want to bother. So you can just grab a black and white texture, put it in your specular map, and then you can see that the specularity is only happening where it's white 
and not happening where it's black and kind of faded in between. So this is just a nice easy way to choose where specular happens and where it doesn't. Another option added to specular is the mixed material color into tint. So a normal material may not give the specular reflection a lot of color, but a metallic material definitely will. And I don't want to limit you to one or the other. So I just put in a slider that makes it so that your specular either uses the material color or does not. So you can see here that the hair is white, so it's reflecting white, and the shirt here is black, so it's reflecting considerably less. There's a specular texture over it, as you can see, but overall it's pulling the colors correctly, and I believe if you change the color, it also matches that. Yeah, so you can see if I make my hair red, I'm getting more red colors for the specular, and that's all that does. A uh, new feature for metallics is that you can actually tint the reflection. So I'm just going to enable metallics, turn them way up, and then I'm going to go into the reflection, and you can tint that reflection to whatever you want. And let me just make a smoothness map so it's more obvious, or... Mm, yeah, smoothness map's fine. Uh, noise... Go for this brick. We're going to go for metallic map as well, go for the same noise. And now you can see that where the, you can still kind of see the reflections here, but you can see that the reflection is definitely red. And you can make it whatever color you want, totally up to you. This is handy for some people, it was a request, so I assume people have a need for it. I added a basic emission parameter to the main tab up here, you can find it basic emission right here. So something that was cropping up more and more was that people had, say, eyes, for example. A lot of people make their eyes glow slightly, and they also wanted to have like a mission on it. So say they had this star emission on it, now they can't really make their eyes glow without having the emission st settings for the stars affect the eyes. So I just added a super simple emission option that will make your texture glow. Just whatever color your model is, is what color will glow. And you can see that now you can make your eyes sort of light up a little bit while having another emission over it. There's no advanced settings here. If you need advanced settings, you should still use the emission options. This is just for a really simple use case and maybe you just want the entire model to glow and you don't want to think about it. Just use basic emission. There's now a mask for environmental rim lighting. Uh, environmental rim lighting is just rim lighting based on the world around you. It's a really good looking thing and I would encourage everybody to just turn it on. You don't even have to mess with any of the settings, just turn it on and it looks good. So there's a mask, I'll grab random noise, pick this one, increase the tiling, let's pick an even more obvious one because that one is not all right, so you can see the, I'll turn up the rim width, and you can see that the rim is now masked. So this is handy for people who want to have that environmental rim lighting, but say they don't want to have it on the edges of their eyes or on like parts that are really obvious that kind of ruin the way they look. So you can mask out whatever you want now. It's a nice little feature. I hope you enjoy it. A new thing this patch is detail textures. They're already in standard, so you may know how to use them, but I'm going to explain them anyway. So to get details on your models, normally you would add like normals and stuff like that. And the detail texture kind of just amplifies that. So I'm going to grab the fabric normal to go with my fabric. Or not normal, I'm going to grab the fabric texture. So I'm just going to grab this one, and all of a sudden you can see that the fabric is much more defined. So if I click none, you'll see that the normals still kind of show that it's fabric, but once I apply the detail texture, all of a sudden it's really obvious. You can see all the threads. So I am going to just cover these settings now. You have detail texture intensity, 
which will just make it more intense. It's basically just multiplying it. And then, or it can fade it right out if you want to go that route as well. The detail brightness is a brightness modifier for it. So the way detail textures work is that zero or black will darken the model to black and white will actually brighten the model. It won't make it white, but it will brighten it. So you can see if I go to my sleeves, even though the sleeves are really dark, you can still see the detail texture. And if it were a straight multiplication, you wouldn't be able to see that because black times white is, or zero times one in that case is just zero. So if your texture is still just black, you're still not gonna be able to add detail to it. But if you have like a gray, like these sleeves, for example, you can add brightness to them. And that works by having a texture that has zero or black as, you know, it lowers the color, white increases the color, and then gray keeps the color the same. So like a 50% black is going to keep your color exactly the same. And that means that you're going to have to make textures with that in mind. You can't just slap a texture on because it might brighten it up too much and that's sort of an issue so let me go for stars and I'll just increase the tiling to like 20 and now you can see that we have these stars detailed all over and the stars are actually making the shirt far brighter than I would like so it's about double so it basically goes from a multiplier of zero to two where one is or two is white and then you would have to to make it not make these stars not make your shirt brighter and just keep them the or keep your shirt the way it should be you would make these 50 percent black or you can go into your brightness and set it to 0.5 and now because you're dividing the texture by 0.5 the stars can no longer make the shirt brighter and you can do the opposite as well where you increase the brightness and then they'll make everything even brighter they will never become emissive i make sure of that so play around with it you can do a lot of cool stuff like i'll grab this rainbow texture for example and you can make your whole shirt look like it's rainbows and then you can go and pan it if you want and you can kind of color yourself in a panning manner if that's what you're going for, I'm sure somebody out there is. <clears throat> the tint is just a tint to that color. And the detail normal is something that was already there. Something else I've added this patch is the ability to select which UV you're using for certain things. Not for everything. If you want to choose a different UV for textures that I don't include the feature on, please let me know and I will add it. But a reason for doing this is that a lot of the time people have, they have their model and it's Atlas or the textures are just scrambled. And you say you wanted to use a flip book and you wanted to apply like a picture like this to your model, or I think I have one on my back actually, something like this, but you just can't do it because your UVs are a mess. You can actually go into Blender or any modeling program and create a second UV map or a third or a fourth. This gives you the option of four. And then you can actually just cut out like that part of the model and make sure it has really clean UVs. And then you can go into your flipbook settings and just pick like whatever UV so that you can have say a shirt that was a mess or say your model was mirrored and you don't want it to be mirrored and you're trying to put a flip book on it but it's showing up on both sides and you don't want that or even tattoos or anything um, now you can create a second UV or a third UV or fourth UV whatever you want and put it exactly where you want so if you want a logo on your shirt you can set your UVs up so that there's a nice position to put that on your shirt and that's that feature I almost forgot one thing with the detail textures. So you may have details that are really like black and white. Like, let me just throw one on here for a good example. If I say I had noise that was really tight, a really intricate noise, something like 
this, but then I made it smaller, so it's like this. Oops. Something that may, or even smaller than that, if you had like really fine details, and you didn't want your details to look kind of, you didn't want it to just look gray from far away, but you also don't want it to look messed up. So if I go into the texture settings and I set the, I turn off the MIP maps so that it kind of gets noisy. You can see like it's noisy when it's far away, but you always want it to be like perfect detail like this. You can actually go into your MIP maps. You want to generate MIP maps and then you want to set out fade out MIP maps. So when you move away, rather, oh, I have to apply it. So when you move away, rather than getting all crazy and noisy, it just fades out and then you can have it fade those colors in when you get close. So you can have something that looks normal from far away, but when you get close, it actually fades in that really small detail. And you can adjust these fade values with the fade range right here. Just note that that is, this is a really common use case that you would see in like AAA games and stuff like that, where you want to have that close range detail, but you just don't want to see it from far away and you don't want to bother rendering it. And this is your solution to that. So if you have a cool use for this or you want to show it off, feel free to send me pics and or on Twitter or whatever, and I will totally retweet you because I am always looking to retweet people who are showing off features in the shader. Heads up. So there was a big issue with flipbooks that I never noticed and nobody ever brought to my attention, so I assume most people didn't notice. Uh, this is just a video of what was happening before because it is fixed now, so I can't show it to you. But basically, if you scaled the X to be like two and you scaled, or you just scaled the X to be bigger and you scaled Y to be shorter, when it rotated, it actually kept the X, whether it was rotated or not, it kept that X straight, so you're or it kept it long and the Y stayed short. So you'll see that the height of this is always the same no matter what the rotation is. And that's obviously not what you want. It looks weird as heck when you rotate this. And in the new way, it actually works properly and rotates. Not a huge difference, but a huge difference to the people it affected. Uh, if you didn't notice this was happening and you had a rotated flipbook on your model, it may look different now, so you may have to go back and look at that because it's now correct. I've added panning to a few things. You can see that you can now pan the normal and the detail normal. You can also pan the detail texture. So something you might want to use this for, say, I mean, you could make water now, I suppose. Uh, let's go into the metallic and reflections, go to clear coat. Enable clear coat so we're real shiny. And you could throw, if you had a water normal, you could throw a water normal on there. And throw a water normal on the main one as well. And it's, well, let's tile it five by five. We'll tile this one five by five. And if we pan it, let's go to detail normal panning, pan it along X.5 speed. So you can see it sort of panning here. You can pan it to one speed and we can pan the this one vertically, I suppose. So now you have two text, two detail text, or two, not details, two normals panning. And it right now it's only affecting the shadows, but you can actually go into your clear coat and say to use pixel normals. And now it looks crazy. So we're gonna lower the intensity of that a little bit. Set it to 0.1, set this to 0.1, and now you kind of have like a wiggly, wet, reflective look. Um, if you did this with full, where is it, clear coat, you max out clear coat, you kind of have those mirror-like watery reflections that you might have. So you could probably make some weird ghetto water shader with this. I don't know. You can definitely do glass, I know that. That covers this patch. If you want to check out the written patch notes, you can head on over to the Trello, or you can see a full list of 4.2 or 4.1 patch notes, or whatever ones you want. You can see what I'm currently working on, and you can see what I have planned next. 
If you want to request a feature in the shader, do it in the Discord. There's a link in the description below. And it gets added to this list where people vote on it and I grab the top ones to implement. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to join the Discord. There's plenty of helpful people in there, including myself. And if you want this shader right now, head on over to the Patreon. Have a great day.